Welcome to the Wave Guide Disk for creating elements for compositing. In this disk we're going to cover creating composites, creating elements for compositing, and how to integrate and marry a composite, which means to bring your 3D images into your background image and have it look like it belongs there. Now, compositing, the word itself means a composite, which means a bunch of different elements brought together. Now most people think of compositing as you generate your 3D geometry like a monster or a UFO and it's put into a background of a building or a city or you know under somebody's bed. Well that's true but we can also use it to do multi-pass rendering on even simple jobs. Now in this case we have my waveguide logo, waveguide lightwave training. Now when I render this if I render it as it is, I get this image, which is you know the logo over a black background. Now, if I'm working this as a job, if, a, if my client comes in and says, "Well, I like the logo, but I don't like the black background. Can we put something else in there?" I say fine because I have rendered this with what is called a 32-bit image. And what a 32-bit image means is that not only do I have 24 bits which are my R, G, and B values, red, blue, and green, I have 8 bits of transparency. And we can take a look at that by switching from image to alpha. Now what the alpha channel is, is kind of a cookie cutter for my image. When I bring this image into another program, a compositing program, uh, like After Effects, or Aura, or Mirage, or Combustion, it should automatically recognize this alpha channel, and it'll save it, it'll bring it in, and it'll put, if there's a background image, we will see this image over a different background, which may be, you know, a blue sky background, it may be a cityscape background, whatever. The important thing is that I save out my images in a 32-bit format. I usually save them as targas and that is just purely uh, because of habit. I've also saved things out as picked or BMP. Oftentimes it's what the client requests and I have a feeling a lot of time that is just because that's what he's accustomed to using. But the important thing is that it's 32-bit. And remember, 32-bit means 24 bits of color. That's 8 bits each of R, G, and B. So 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. And if you work out the binary, 8 bits adds up to 256. So you multiply 256 by 256 by 256, you get the magic number of about 16 million colors. So that's where that number comes from. Add in another 8 bits, you get 32 bits, and those 8 bits give us the alpha channel. Now why do we need 8 bits instead of just 1? That's just instead of, might be just black and white. Well the reason for that is that it is not a solid, it's not just black and white, it's actually a feathering magnify this to 400 percent and you can see although it's solid white here and solid black there there is some feathering going on in the edge and if this logo was partially transparent that would be gray or at least shades of gray instead of solid black and solid white and that's why we have full 8 bits of grayscale which gives us a range of 256 which is the same as we have in our red blue and green and that's why we want to save out any images as 32-bit images if they're being saved to use as an element in a composite. Sometimes with LightWave we do render our composites in a sing single pass. LightWave can be used like comp as a compositor to actually put pictures together or we can do compositing kind of things with LightWave. Now in this scene we have floorboards, we have toy robots, a tissue box over here, 
A little further in the scene, we have a boy looking over the side of his bunk bed as the robots are moving past. Now, this is a composited shot in that several elements are being brought together. Uh, one way of doing this would have been to have the, the shot of the boy, the image sequence of the boy, in my compositing program and put it in. But in this particular case, I decided to do it all right in lightweight. And this is our scene. I have I took a digital photo of the floor and also of several other elements, one being a tissue box over here, a clothes basket, and even the image sequence of the boy mapped onto a plane. If I switch this to wireframe, look how simple this scene is. The robots are a bit complex, however, that tissue box is literally a cube, a stretch out cube, as is the, the laundry basket, and I believe this was some rumpled up clothing over here, and I believe there was a book or something over there. And the shot of the boy this line here, I decided when putting together this scene, because I wanted all the camera motions to match, I wanted to have an overhead shot, I had just seen the movie with Michelle Pfeiffer called What Lies Beneath, and they, I was looking in the behind the scenes, and they did something similar to this, so I wanted to try it, and you can see this plane is moving in. Now by putting it in the scene, having it become a geometric element of the scene. It made all the camera angles line up. I didn't have to worry about matching the move of the camera in my compositing program. I didn't want to have a lockdown camera. So I have a tilt to it. I have a little bit of a dolly to it. It's a very dynamic scene. Everybody who sees this, you can always tell, or at least I can always tell whenever someone sees this, if they've worked as a camera person or in production because they always question how I did this scene. And the final render, it came out to look very good, uh, very believable, as you can see here, especially when it's in motion because the boy is moving just a little bit. I did have to go in and hand roto out some of it around his fingers, but it was a very successful shot. Here's another situation where I'm doing compositing type things all within Lightwave. What we have here are basically three planes, three big squares representing three layers of elements. We have a background plate, we have a foreground plate, and I believe there is another plate in between there, and we also have a particle trail coming in with a lens flare at the tip. Now this is something you can do in a compositing program, but by doing it in 3D we have a couple of options. We can do things like we can move this in 3D space, we can, we can keyframe, we can remove keyframes, we can add in actual 3D elements, and when we render these out we can see pretty quickly, here's my tree element, the foreground, halfway through, it's moving in. And these are just flat images mapped onto planes, but they're moving, they're, they're moving in a way that makes sense because I'm keyframing the camera and it's coming in and I can even set this up so the light would cast illumination on my 3D objects and you'll see that in some of the more advanced sections of this disk. So in our camera view, we're not seeing the transparency here, but the thing is moving through, and I have this kind of parallax shift. If I want to move that tree a little bit forward so the move is a little more pronounced, I can do that. Or if I want to fake a little bit of, uh, say, depth of field, I can go in to my object here, select this image in my image editor, 
and I could take it into Photoshop or whatever and blur it. Or I believe I can even select a blur in here and set my blur here. One of the things I do sometimes if I'm really lazy, I go into here, my surface editor, and set my image mapping, the uh, pixel blending, to ridiculously high, like 10 or 20, and it'll blur the image for me. But generally I would do that, you know, keep it as like tree blur or something because that way I'm not doing the same math over and over. But this is, what kind of compositing is this? I don't know, 3D compositing, light wave compositing, it's kind of a different animal. Uh, if I was doing this traditionally, I would render out, you know, the the tree layer separately, the background layer with the movement separately, and also the uh, the lens flare with the particle trail. And there are cases I want to do that. I mean, that's perfectly valid. Uh, in fact, most of the time I did that. It's just that in this case, this shot wound up uh, being shortened, and I believe it was probably only two or three seconds, and it happened very quickly. Um, given the time and the resources, I'd certainly love to do everything separately, and so I can go in and maybe I want to blur this, add a little glow, do some color correction. But many times, especially in the production world, things have to happen very quickly, and it's sometimes a lot easier just to do something in a single pass. Sometimes it's a lot more work to do it in a single pass. But the thing is to understand the process. Understand why things go together, why you do things a certain way. Compositing is a definitely a different animal. Creating elements for compositing. One thing you should know, compositing is the most, most emotional of the light wave disciplines because it's, it's very rarely what is accurate that's important. What makes sense, that doesn't matter. It's when you look at it and it feels right. When you're able to create elements that look like they go together, that feel like they should be to go be together. You, you throw lights, and you know maybe the math doesn't work out, but you look at it and you go, you know, that that looks like it belongs there. The whole goal is to create these elements that blend seamlessly. When the seams disappear, you know you've done your job. And to get to that point, you have to understand the process, the mechanics, uh, all the settings you need to know, all the processes, the techniques that are required to create these elements. Hopefully, you know, you'll have Lightwave and you have a couple of other programs like After Effects or Aura. But, you know, even if you only have Lightwave, there's a lot you can do right in the native Lightwave, not using any other plugins or other programs, and you can create some awesome composites.